We have a moral imperative to sustain Americans to help them. Hello everyone, I'm Esther Vida and welcome to Hometown Talents and Treasures. Our guest is attorney Alfred Zappala. He's an author, a lawyer, and the founder and president of the Sicilian Project. The Sicilian Project trains Sicilian students formal English language through elementary and high school. Al, in fact, spends half the year in Sicily writing and overseeing the project. Alfred, welcome to Hometown Talents and Treasures. Thank you for your hospitality and inviting me. I'm very much appreciative of it. Well, let's talk about the Sicilian Project, and we also have your books uh, to talk about. But first, uh, you spend half your time in Sicily. You, you were born in Lawrence. How did that come about? Well, that's a long story, and that's the subject of one of my books. So if you'd like to learn about the entire story, you've got to get one of my books. But to make a long story short, I had a law office right here in Andover for many years. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was across the street from Back Streets on Essex Street next to the um, public library. And going back into 1995, 1996, when my, my, my dad was uh, dying, his name was Santo, they called him Sonny, he, he asked me to go, uh, as a special favor him, to go to Sicily uh, to make a pilgrimage to our ancestral church <clears throat> and say a prayer for him. And I, I asked him, once, you know, what's up with that, Dad? Why would you want me to do that? And he said to me, well, he had made a, he had made a promise to his father, and he was never able to fulfill it. And uh, so he said, now you have to go for, for him and for me. So my dad died, God rest his soul. I buried him, got on a plane four days later, flew to Boston and Rome, which I've gone many thousands of times. That Rome to Catania, which is on the uh, east coast of Sicily, I had never been, Rome to Catania. And uh, when my feet hit the tarmac uh, at Fontana Rosa Airport, in Catania, all I can say to you is that every DNA molecule in my body said to me, you're home. Mm. So for two weeks, I mean, I, I made my pilgrimage to Tre Castagni, which is, by the way, where in Lawrence we have the Feast of the Three Saints, mm -hmm. what my brother Tom's very active in. Yep. That my grandfather, Gaetano Teresi, was actually one of the three people who brought it to the city of Lawrence. Very interestingly enough, both my grandparents were born in Tre Castagni, Sicily, but they didn't even have met themselves there. They didn't meet themselves until they were in Lawrence. Mm. Can you imagine? So anyways, I went over there. I had my own voyage of discovery. And over the years, I just spent more and more time. And now it's like up to eight months there and four months here. But, and I, I, wrote about, um, I wrote about the, in one of my books, I think it was Gaetano's Trunk, my second book, I wrote about the economic problems that are afflicting Europe with the crisis, the economic crisis, which, by the way, yeah, you ought to thank your lucky stars and you're in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Because here we have unemployment, we've got welfare, we've got food stamps, we've got fuel assistance, you name it, we have it here. There is very little uh, social uh, relief uh, in Europe. And in Sicily in particular, which is the poor stepchild of Italy. Uh, right now in Sicily we have a 54% unemployment rate with kids wow. graduating from college. So. If you, if you kind of like uh, juxtapose the critical uh, drain of brains that's leaving Sicily now, it's not like it was at the beginning of the 20th century when millions of Sicilians came to the sweatshops in the city of Lawrence, New York, Philly, and so forth. Those folks that came then were primarily unskilled labor, uneducated and unskilled. Now today in Sicily, the educated are leaving. Mm. So basically what you have left is simply the very young and the very old. That critical intellectual mass that's necessary to keep an economy vibrant is dissipating. So I wrote in my book, uh, Gaetano's Trunk, my second book, I said, you know, if I had a million bucks, what I would do is I would train kids how to speak English in, in Sicily. Uh, because Italy, Greece, Portugal, Spain, those are the four EU laggards. Why are those the four EU laggards? Because they're not bilingual countries. They've got to compete with uh, Holland, with Belgium. They have to compete with uh, the largest economy, Germany. 
And as a result, in the inter international marketplace and also in the EU, EU marketplace, they're lagging behind because they cannot speak English. So whimsically, I said to my, it was a small chapter too, it was only a five page chapter. And someone read it? Some, listen to this. And so someone read it. Donated $10,000 yeah. and then it started. Bingo, that was basically, a guy, a guy <laughs> called That's me up. That's a short, short summary. <laughs> basically, that was it. That's the long and the short of it. He said he was gonna send me a check. I thought it would be like 100 bucks. So I was like, great, what am I gonna do with 100 bucks, <laughs> right? The $10,000 check. So now, that was over two years ago, so, you know, we, I, we don't teach, okay? The Sicilian Project, I have no teachers over there. Rather, what I did was, we found the Harvard of Sicily, where basically the teachers there are native speakers. Mm -hmm. They have the TOEFL degrees, which are teaching English as a foreign language certification, and we issue them grants. So basically, I get money now with my organization, which basically is growing by leaps and bounds. And we issue grants, and we started in Taormina, which is um, the pearl of Europe, really. And now, as word has gotten out the last year and a half, communities, in the same communities who are contacting us because their, bu their budgets, are, their education budgets are devastated. And we're now doing programs for the poorer communities. So now, for example, this week, uh, it's uh, this week we're running. We're starting our new semester into four different, four different towns. So mm. that's what we're doing right now. You know, my in elementary and high school. Yeah, kids. and we're trying to get a, a program together now to teach the teachers how to teach, because mm. the English language teachers, as a general rule, in uh, Italy, uh, specifically in Sicily, are awful. Because really, it's not so much what you know; it's really who you know to get a job. And a lot of times the political jobs that are given to somebody, to somebody's friend, you know. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the kids don't know how to speak English, they can't compete, and that's what the problem is. But, you know, this year we'll train 200 kids, which is, you know. It's significant. Pain. And and I know it's yeah. only about two years old, the program, but how are you able to measure success? Well, we have, first of all, the students are interviewed. You have to understand that a class has got between 10 and 15 kids, and there's 100 kids that want those 10 positions. So they're interviewed. Highly competitive. Yeah, but Babylonia interviews them. And they have to sign a contract that they'll come to the class. They, they, they get 22 hours worth of instruction. But you know, when you teach a kid um, English, just like when we went to school, I learned French and Latin and so forth. Mm -hmm. you had Latin one, Latin two, Latin three, Latin four, French one, French two. It's the same thing with uh, teaching English. You've got beginners, beginners one, beginners two, beginners three, intermediate. So there's basically nine rungs before you get up there. And they're pre-tested before everyone. And they're you know, post-tested afterwards. Right now our groups are up to that middle area. And this past uh, summer, the first group uh, began to take the uh, standardized examination called the Cambridge Exam of the English Language, which is uh, it's a standardized test in Europe, mm -hmm. and all our kids passed. So now the kids are beginning to get up, but it's going to take it's going to take a while uh, to get up there. And we also want to kind of like spider out into some of the other areas like Syracuse, Palermo, some of the urban areas. That really let me needed. let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. You you spend a lot of time and a lot of energy helping um, the Sicilian. A population. Some may argue there is need in here. You look at Lawrence, you look at some of these areas. Uh, make a case Excuse for me. why, and I know uh, why it's important as a global uh, community to make sure our kids are educated, but make your case about why uh, take your money well, and energy there's, there. There's, there's, a few, there's, a few eerie, there's a few reasons over here. Here's the first reason, okay? There are 12 million Americans of Sicilian ancestry, 12 million. That's a substan of the 30 million Italian Americans, 12 million of them are Sicilian Americans, making it the largest subcategory. That's number one. Those folks came here, and America opened up its arms to them. And lots of them, in Andover, Massachusetts, for example, you had Mr. Wood with the with the with the mills and so forth over here. This is where it came from. The sweatshops of the city of Lawrence, Philadelphia, Chicago, and New York City is where they initially came, and then as time went on, they went into the suburbs. 
okay? There are many great people in Andover, and I'm you know, practicing law or, or, or being professors or whatever f that can straight line descendants from the immigrants that came on, on the boat, okay? Uh, we have a moral imperative as to seeing Americans to help Italy. Mm. It's a moral, we have to be just like, uh, we have to exert as much influence now in Italy as the American Jewish community does in Israel, okay? The American Jewish community has a tremendous amount of political pressure in, um, in uh, Israel. But I want to ask you, if I asked 100 American uh, Italians, who's the prime minister? Uh, name the political parties. Basic civics questions about what's going in Italy, they haven't a clue. They'll talk about cannolis and how they <laughs> love cannolis. They'll talk about pizza and they'll talk about pizza. But as far as learning about the cultural underpinnings of Italy and more specifically Sicily, the vast, major vast majority of American Italians uh, do not, are not up to speed. What's the danger if we don't help the Sicilian, Our especially the okay, young population? Okay. Well, here's the thing, okay, it's not only Italy, okay, because there, there needs to be Sicilian projects, there needs to be uh, uh, Hungarian projects, there needs to be Portuguese projects. Listen, our, ba our international banking communities are all now interdependent. I mean, right now we have, we have this crisis going on in, in Ukraine, and we have the crisis going on with the Crimea, uh, Crimea with uh, Putin and Russia. Let me tell you something. About 30% of all the natural gas that flows into Europe comes from Russia. If Mr. Putin goes like this, click, and shuts that, that natural gas off, instantaneously Europe is going to get into a, another deep recession, maybe even a depression. What does that have to do with America? Very simple. Your banking money, your mutual funds, is invested in banks that have loaned t tens of billions of dollars to Europe. So we, we, we have a vested interest. Not only that, but Europe happens to be a major one trading partner. Okay? Where are we going to sell our goods to? Who is going to buy our goods if it's not our European Union trading? Is it going to be China? You think they're going to buy our stuff? How many cars has the Chinese bought or the Japanese? And tell me exactly how many cars Japan has bought from the United States as we're driving our Toyotas and our Nissans all over the place. No. All things American, right, in Europe has, it's got that snap, crackle, and pop. We need Europe. There's no question about it. That's why. That's, you know, I mean, you asked me the question why. That's, and this is what I do. I talk about it. You know, two weeks ago, I was invited to talk about this very topic at the very prestigious Italian-American Museum in, in Manhattan's Little Italy. Uh, I'm going up to Portland, Maine to talk to the Italian-American Heritage Cultural Foundation next week. Mm -hmm. I'm the St. Thomas of, <laughs> is what I do. I go around and I stick the finger in the wound and I want to make the Italian-American community feel guilty that they've yeah. done little or nothing. I mean, going on a trip is not helping. But it, you know, in Sicily right now, tourism is the number one Correct. E economy. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? But it's not that from the Americans. It's not from the Americans. The Americans probably, three or 4,000 Americans, maybe 5,000 Americans uh, go on holiday to Sicily. If, the, if Sicily had to depend on three or 4,000 mm -hmm. people, guess what? They'd be on the bread line, all right? Uh, where where the, do you see the economy moving? Russia, if, Russia is supporting, believe it or not, the Russian tourist, the Baltic area tourist, mm -hmm. um, from, from the Netherlands, from Belgium, from England, from Hung Hungary, from uh, Czechoslovakia. Those are the ones that come down on holiday and they spend the euro and uh, they're supporting the uh, Sicilian uh, culture right now. So, okay, so tourism is the number one and yes. it's not from America. Yeah. Where do you see an area in the economy in Sicily that could be the next, the next money maker there? Shale, oil. Off the coast mm. of Italy are enormous uh, oil fields sitting there. And the most important thing that Sicily has is the sun. Mm. We've got an unbelievable climate. You talk about things like solar or you know, mm, uh, energy like that. We have... And it's just not being used. 
not or being converted. used. It's a scandal. It's a scandal how much it's underutilized. Mm. I mean, we're talking about uh, an emerging third world country in Sicily. Wow. I mean, it's not it's not that bad. But twenty up up until about fifteen years ago, you couldn't find a bank amount to do a cash withdrawal on an ATM machine. It just you know wasn't there. But now you know it's changing. Now that new generation of young kids, and by young kids I'm talking about anybody up to age 35 or 40, I consider that to be young. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the area that we have, to, we have to work with. Let me ask you about your books. Uh, your books, okay. Gatano's Trunk, uh, The Reverse Immigrant, which I'm guessing is you. That was my first you. one. That's that you. First You're one, the yeah. reverse immigrant. That's me. Uh, and Figu Bedu. That's my last one. Figu Bedu, and remind me what that means. Beautiful child. Beautiful child. And, and you're working on your And my new one will fourth. be coming out um, by Christmas, and it should be available this summertime. That's called uh, Joy of My Heart. How would you categorize this? Because I know you write about They're whimsical personal observational essays. Humorous. Right. You laugh. You cry. I make you laugh. <laughs> I make you cry. God gave me two, 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 uh, two, ta two gifts, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the gifts is uh, to paint a picture with words, and uh, the other one is to paint a picture with, by writing. Mm. So basically what I do, but they're not scholarly books. I mean, I save my they're scholarly... They're from personal experience. Yeah, they're like exactly right, and I'm going to teach the reader about Sicily. Uh, I'm going to teach the reader about the history of the oppression that uh, Sicilian folks have uh, been subjected to for over two millennia. I mean, our, the, the people of Sicily are probably one of Europe's most oppressed uh, mm. groups of people. So, I mean, I basically teach about it, but I kind of, I do it in a whimsical way, not in a, a scholarly way where I'm going to say, you know, the plateau is the, but, 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 but talk about, you know, something for a geography. That's not, that's not me. Um, what motivates you? I'm running out of runway. <laughs> I mean, so long on the short of it. Uh, my grandfather Gaetano taught us a long time ago, um, you know, do good and forget it, do bad and regret it. And my family Ooh, I like that. Do good, good and forget it. Do, do bad, bad yeah. and regret That's it. That's been the hallmark of the Teresi family in Lawrence, uh, Jackson Lumber Company. Uh, that's the Teresi family. My mom was a Teresi. Uh, we have, and I say we because I'm just as much a Teresi as my cousin Alfred Teresi. I'm half Teresi, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have spent uh, uh, over a generation doing stuff, stuff uh, in the greater Merrimack Valley area. Uh, for people. Um, you know, my brother Tom, is, as I said, my brother Tom, my sister Anna, um, my cousin Alpha, almost the entire uh, Teresi family, and I'm doing the same thing in Sicily. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, it's this, nothing has changed other than the fact that I am more, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, I'm European, okay? Um, 20 years ago, I became an EU citizen, and it's, um, so I hold two passports, and I identify a great deal with Italy and all things European. Uh, and as time goes on, as I get older, uh, I really, there's a, there's a, I don't know what it is, there's a compelling, a, a compelling a pulling for me to spend more and more time there. Mm -hmm. So I have a beautiful place in Achitrezza, which is right in the, right in the ocean. Uh, I do my traveling around, I gallivant all over the place, and then I, uh, you know, I, write, my, I write my little books. And the people love them. I mean, it's crazy. You're one of my Facebook friends. You see mm -hmm. how many friends I have on Facebook. I have three different Facebook accounts now. Each one of them has over 2,000 people. It's crazy. I have a newsletter that goes out. Over 5,000 people um, read my newsletter. And you know, what's next for you? Um, it's funny you mention that, but I've got to get this project stabilized. This, this is the same project, which I'm going to do. But right before I left, I got my, my law partner. I have a law practice in Catania, and I do international law in Sicily, not in America. I mean, every time, the last time I wanted to go to court in the United States, I laid down till that urge passed. I don't go to court in America. <laughs> I'll teach. I teach at the law schools. I've been on the faculty at Northeastern University Law School for two decades. I teach the graduating seniors how to pass the bar exam. I've written books on the bar exam. I've trained over 8,000 Massachusetts attorneys, and many of your viewers who are attorneys in the Merrimack Valley area know me as my background as, an, as a law professor. That said, okay, right before I came back, <coughs> before Christmas, I was called by a priest, a Sicilian priest, and uh, he had heard about me. In, in, in Sicilian, they call, or Italian, they call an attorney 
avocado. They don't mm -hmm. call them attorneys, right? An He's advocate. An advocate. He heard about me and he, he took me to this house. And in the house, there was uh, six women with a couple of kids each. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they, it was a, a, battered, a battered woman's shelter, uh, an illegal battered woman's shelter, because in Sicily, they don't have the, uh, uh, the, the resources to have 209A restraining orders like we have in the United States or anything like that. So when a, if a woman gets beat up, yeah. th the police have to send them back pretty much to where they came from. So some of the churches have these little, uh, these little runaway homes over there, and they need money. So a priest called you? Yep, asked for financial assistance. So I remember I had a few hundred bucks in my pocket, and I said, here, but it's like in the back of my head. Mm. So now there are other areas that we can help. You know, if a father goes out, of, if a father loses his job in Italy, okay, say I have two kids, okay, uh, loses his job, over here you can get some pretty, I don't want to say decent money, but it's, you know, it's okay money. Uh, there you get exactly 12 payments of 450 euro. That's about $550. So if you have a family of four on 600 bucks, you've got to pay your rent, food, clothing, blah, 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 blah everything. You can't do it. And then after 12 months, that's it. See you later, ciao. So the support system over there isn't, the best way to help them is to empower them through education. Teach them. They've got great products over there. A lot of those companies, you know, they paint the Mona Lisa and then they put it in the closet. <laughs> They've got outstanding products. And um, they have to learn how to market. A lot of them are. You know, if you're, you're one of my Facebook friends, Esther. You know that some of the, the young folks they now look to me, uh, uh, you know, for ideas about basic marketing. I mean, they have to learn. You don't buy the steak, you buy the sizzle, right? That's marketing one-on-one. So uh, you have to uh, get out there. You have, to, you have to market yourself. And the Sicilians are just learning about that right now. Mm. They're way behind the Italians, too, by the way. And notice I say the Sicilians versus Italians. That's because Sicily is an autonomous region of Italy. You know, some folks, like myself, happen to think that you know, Sicily could in fact be an occupied ter <laughs> territory and maybe should be independent, but because of the geopolitical importance of where the island is, how strategically important it is, that's not going to happen. It's going to be completely, that's going to stay as part of the EU and Italy. So, Very interesting me. stuff, Alfred. Yeah, it is interesting stuff. Um, a lot to learn about. Thank you. For being AlfredZappola.com. That's oh, my well, website. I'll, I'll definitely put Alfred that up Zappola. there. AlfredZappola.com. The SicilianProject.com. <laughs> and by the way, if you go to the Sicilian Project, it says donate now. You click the I button. I saw that. Okay. And there's a little jar there. Yeah, I'm looking that. for an cool. angel. Okay. okay. So you, it's out there now. We need, there's an angel watching your program today. Mm -hmm. That's going to say, you know, this guy Zappala, he's he a little makes bit a wacky. Little sense. He's a little bit wacky, <laughs> but he's doing a good His thing. His heart is in the right place. There you go. That's what it's all about. All right, Alfred Zappala. Thank you so much. There you go. That's it. And that's our show for today. Thanks so much for joining us. And if there's someone or an organization you'd like to see profiled on Hometown Talents and Treasures, email me at Esther and Vida at gmail.com. Remember, it can be anyone. The important thing is that they selflessly donate their talent and time to help others. See you next time.